Hope you guys are enjoying your holiday today. Now, me personally, I decided I was going all out this year to celebrate this momentous occasion. My rainbow flag is flying proudly in the front yard. My neighbors, they're giving me dirty looks. My neighbors seem to be a bit aggravated with me, but I don't care. No one is going to discourage me from celebrating the biggest holiday of the year. Well, KC, this is blasphemy. Today is Easter, the day set aside to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. What you are describing sounds nothing like Easter. Easter? I didn't know that today was Easter. According to our fearless leader, John Biden, today we are required to celebrate Transgender Day of Visibility. Now, this required celebration, it's in addition to Transgender Awareness Week in November. It's also in addition to Woke Christmas, the entire month set aside to celebrate the LGBT community, and it takes place every June. Last I checked, transgender people make up less than 1% of the overall population. There are entire months set aside to celebrate them, while the man who gave his life to take away the sins of the world, he is honored and celebrated for 24 hours. Doesn't make sense to me, but what the hell do I know? I know someone who is celebrating Easter this morning, along with millions of other people, Kim Mulkey. Now, for those that don't know, Kim Mulkey, head coach of the LSU Lady Tigers. If you were to believe the mainstream media, Don Staley is the best head coach in professional women's basketball. Well, KC, what do you mean? Dawn Staley coaches at the University of South Carolina. She coaches college basketball. Yeah, but for young women, the professional level in basketball is the collegiate level. Look at the salaries of Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and compare those salaries to the minimum wage earnings that dump divers are collecting in the WNBA. Then you tell me who is playing professional basketball. According to the mainstream media, Don Staley, best coach in women's basketball, but like most things reported in the mainstream media, this narrative is blatantly false. Dawn Staley's won two national championships. Kim Mulkey has won four. Dawn Staley has a 77% winning percentage. Pretty good. Kim Mulkey wins 86% of her games. Hell, Kim Mulkey isn't one of the best coaches in women's basketball. Kim Mulkey is one of the greatest coaches in all of basketball. Yet for some reason, the mainstream media seems to have severe disdain for Kim Mulkey. My inside sources tell me doctors at Woke Memorial Hospital, they have discovered a new disease. You know how 90% of the mainstream media has been diagnosed with a stage 4 case of OMB? Orange Man Bad! Doctors at Woke Memorial, they've discovered a new strain of OMB. They're calling it KMB, Kim Mulkey Bad. When the mainstream media covers Kim Mulkey, the narrative always seems to be negative. Dawn Staley is portrayed by the media as a trailblazer for women's basketball. The same Dawn Staley who endorses cases of mythical racism. While Kim Mulkey is portrayed as homophobic, transphobic, and even worse, she is portrayed as... The Donald Trump of women's basketball. Yesterday afternoon, LSU beats UCLA in the Sweet 16, advancing to the Elite Eight. But Kim Mulkey leading another team to the Elite Eight and possibly even the Final Four, that was not the main story throughout the day yesterday. Before the game, the LA Times, they published a hit piece on Kim Mulkey and LSU that they described as a preview of the Sweet 16. The article, it was written by some doofus named Ben Bolch or Ben Gooch. Who cares? It doesn't matter what his name is. I have never heard of Ben, but working at the LA Times, that is an automatic strike to your credibility. I mean, this is the same mainstream media outlet that continues to donate woke welfare to Bill Plaschke. The same Bill Plaschke that cries every Sunday from September through January when he sees 70,000 fans in Arrowhead Stadium dressed like their favorite Chiefs or Indians. I mean, Guardians. But in his article in the LA Times, Ben Gulch described the matchup between UCLA and LSU as a matchup of good versus evil. 
He asked the dwindling readership at the LA Times if they preferred milk and cookies, which is how he described the roster at UCLA, or if they preferred cheering for Louisiana hot sauce. The evil women from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, led by the wife of Lucifer Kim Mulkey. Well, you know, I made up that last part. Obviously, Kim Mulkey's not married to Lucifer. That prestigious honor, it belongs to the Wicked Weave at MSNBC. But if Ben Gulch had stopped here with his descriptions, probably would have been no big deal. Problem is, he didn't. According to Kim Mulkey, Benjamin, he took it too far when he described the young women at LSU as dirty debutantes. Obviously, that is a lie, but not only did Benjamin lie once, he lied twice. Because he described the young women from UCLA as America sweethearts. Um, what? America sweethearts? Really? During the 1990s, Jerry Jones claimed that the Dallas Cowboys were America's team. Now, a lot of people disagreed with that claim, but at least Jerry Jones had a leg to stand on. It's been, what, about 30 years, and I can still name most of the players on that roster. Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin, at one point Deion Sanders, Leon Lett, Emmett Smith, Jimmy Johnson, legendary head coach, Barry Switzer, head coach for their final Super Bowl win. What about the Moose? Remember the Moose? He and Mike Allstott, they were the last real fullbacks in the NFL. Now, even though most people hated the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, he could get away with calling them America's team because America was familiar with their roster. The Dallas Cowboys had actual stars. How many of you can name a single player on UCLA's roster? How many of you could identify their coach? Before they were eliminated by LSU in the Sweet 16, how many of you guys even knew that UCLA was involved in the women's tournament? My guess is the answer to all three of those questions, nobody knew. Calling the young women at UCLA America sweethearts, that's the definition of a stretch. But like I said... The point of contention for Kim Mulkey was Ben Gulch describing the young women from LSU as dirty debutantes. Before the game yesterday, Kim Mulkey addressed the mainstream media. Now, to her credit, she was calm during the press conference. She managed to maintain her composure. But even with that being the case, Kim Mulkey absolutely unloaded on this asshole from the LA Times. Watch for yourself. I saw an article from the LA Times. You can criticize coaches all you want. That's our business. But the one thing I'm not going to let you do, I'm not going to let you attack young people. And there were some things in this commentary, guys, that you should be offended by as women. It was so sexist, and they don't even know it. It was good versus evil in that game today. All us dirty debutantes, take your phone out right now and Google dirty debutantes and tell me what it says. I'll let you talk about 18 to 21 year old kids in that tone. It was even sexist for this reporter to say UCLA was milk and cookies. Now you women sit there and you keep your mouth shut if you want. I'm in the last third of my career, but I'm not gonna let sexism continue. And if you don't think that's sexism, then you're in, in denial. How dare people attack kids like that? Like Kim Mulkey, I didn't know what the hell a dirty debutante was. I had to look it up on Google. When I looked up the definition of debutante, it said, an upper-class young woman making her first appearance in fashionable society. Huh. Well, that doesn't sound all that bad, right? Another word for that would be elegant. Those are words that the mainstream media would use to describe the Yentas on The View. Look at those debutantes. Aren't they elegant? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're real elegant until the whoopee cushion hikes her leg and unleashes that boodle breeze. It's amazing how fast they go on The View from elegance to flatulence. Since the definition of debutante was positive, I looked up the definition of dirty debutante. At that point, I understood why Kim Mulkey was upset. When I googled dirty debutante, the first sites that came up were Pornhub and X videos. Basically, the LA Times described the young women of LSU as being porn stars. Now, let me ask you something. 
Let's assume for a second that Clay Travis, Bobby Burak over at OutKick, let's assume for a second they wrote the exact same article about Dawn Staley and the young women at South Carolina. How would the mainstream media react to that? They would charge them with a dual violation of the woke commandments. They would accuse OutKick of racism and misogyny. They would call for Clay Travis to be thrown off of national radio. And maybe they would even demand that OutKick be scrubbed from the internet. But when the LA Times does this to Kim Mulkey, there are no accusations of racism and misogyny throughout the mainstream media. It's simply a definition or a difference of opinion. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm actually going to give a little bit of credit to Nancy Armour and USA Today. They were the only mainstream media outlet that I found that labeled the LA Times as racist and misogynist. Now, to be perfectly clear, I don't think this was racism or misogyny from the LA Times. I don't think the LA Times was going after the players at LSU. I think they were specifically targeting Kim Mulkey. I'm giving credit to Nancy Armour for at least keeping her narrative consistent. I'm crediting Nancy Armour for being willing to call out a woke media outlet. I don't necessarily have a problem with most of this article from the LA Times. I think the dirty debutante description was inappropriate, but I didn't think most of the article was overly offensive. Now, I'm not easily offended, but I can understand why Kim Mulkey was pissed off about it. My problem with the LA Times and the mainstream media in general it's the reason they constantly attack Kim Mulkey. This has absolutely nothing to do with basketball, everything to do with politics. They don't like Kim Mulkey because she refused to publicly support Bob Griner. They don't like Kim Mulkey because she defied the directives of Aunt Fauci. Kim Mulkey, like most normal people, was not a fan of the triple Kobe mask. They compare Kim Mulkey to Donald Trump. They accuse her of homophobia and transphobia. The media disdain towards Kim Mulkey. Like I said, nothing to do with basketball, everything to do with her politics. At the same time, Dawn Staley is given a pass because she tithes 10% of her income to Woke United Methodist. That is my problem. I don't have a problem with the criticism of Kim Mulkey. I have a problem with the criticism not going both ways. Now, I will disagree with one thing that Kim Mulkey said. She said that the media should not criticize players at LSU because they're kids, they're young women, young people. That's not how this works. These are not kids. These are professional athletes. Angel Reese making millions of dollars. Flage Johnson, millions of dollars. They are being paid to play basketball. By definition, that is a professional athlete. And with that being the case, you are fair game for media criticism. But give me your thoughts on this. Kim Mulkey goes scorched earth on the LA Times. What she said must have worried the LA Times because they quietly edited the article. They removed the dirty debutante's description. Guess they were worried that their pretend friends in the mainstream media would quit inviting them to the Butt Bongo Festival. Is it just me or does the media treat Kim Mulkey and Dawn Staley differently? If so, why do you think that is? Why is Kim Mulkey demonized, vilified, while Dawn Staley is portrayed as a hero? I gave you my reason. Tell me yours. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.